planned the parade. The Raptors are undefeated. We're going 82 and 0. We're going all the way to the ship. Welcome into Raptors today. Raptors take out the Minnesota Timberwolves in Game One, 97 to 94. Sherm, Jonesy, Akil, Augustine. But before we go anywhere, we got to share our open gym moment. A beautiful moment. Check out Coach Darko with his reaction to his very first win as an NBA head coach. <laughs> Winning is f***ing fun, okay? And it's not easy. And you guys gave it all out there, okay? And I'll tell you this, none of you guys played the best game of the season tonight, okay? We have so much more room for improvement. And that's our goal, night in, night out, to continue getting better. Yes, sir! And what you guys did, we stayed together. And you got, you got, got, got a win for the team. Hello, job, guys. Bring it in. Family on three. One, two, three. Family! Coach came in like a bat out of hell. Scotty almost took him out with a bucket of water. Great moment, though. Shouts out to the uh, Open Gym team for capturing that moment. Jonesy, we'll start with you. You've been around for a lot of Raptors coaches' first wins. But talk about the energy of this group. Uh, to me, um, bias included. That's why Open Gym is, like, to me, the best show on TV. Like, okay. there's nowhere else you're seeing that. Um that was a great win. And and that reaction says something or should say something to people about this team. The culture reset? The, exactly. The culture reset, um, the, 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 the closeness, the camaraderie, the bonding that's developing. That was win one. And I know there's people out there saying, take it easy. You got 81 more to go. But, you know, we talk about trying to be even keel, not get too high, not get too low. But let's to me, put this in perspective. A guy from Darko, he's come from a war-torn country. He's worked his way through. Basketball has been a major part of his life. He's come to North America, paid his dues and his assistant, gets his first head coaching job. He's running the show, and you get to that moment. Celebrate it. And, and as I said, I know you're supposed to be even keel, but as he said, winning is fun, and winning in this league is hard. And when it happens, as much as people say, oh, well, you know, act like you've been there. and t Yeah, you can, but... You got to celebrate that. You 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 have to. And uh, you know, at the end of the game, I saw the, I saw three people going for the game ball. Pascal finally got it. Jamma took it from him. Coach Jamma took it from him. And right away, I thought, I know where that's going. I know what's going to happen. I didn't know it would be captured like that. But there's going to be a little, hey, way to go. First notch in the belt for you, Darko. And I, I, I love that kind of stuff. You've been on a team. We've all been on teams. When there's a moment to celebrate like that with your, with your brothers, I'm all for it. Yeah, I think, you know, we tend to talk about athletes in a vacuum. You know, they're, they're so reserved. They act too cool for school. It's too much money for them to really enjoy things and show it outwardly. They do it privately. When you see that type of happiness, that type of joy, that type of support and camaraderie in a professional locker room, it only doesn't work when it's not real. Yep. That was real. A genuine moment. That was genuine. And it gives you another kind of look behind the layers of who Darko is. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he was happy. Yeah. The entrance and alone he deserves to, yeah. to be happy. Yeah. <laughs> and But there's a balance, too. He goes through his happiness, and he, he peels it back and says, it's hard. We didn't play our best game. Yep. We're going to get better. So the perspective is there, but you can enjoy the moment. And to me, I enjoy those true expressions of happiness when they happen and they're not forced. And um, a lot has to be said about how they got the win because they stuck to the principles that he's preached. Yes. Pascal may not have had the biggest numbers big shots in the fourth big shots in the fourth right he moved away from that mid-range a bit towards the three-point line when he saw that would help the other guys so talk about what that means knowing that they stuck to the first principles that have been implied applied in this preseason it's easy to revert yeah when things get tough it's easy and they didn't 
um, I like the consistent effort to stick to it the entire game, even when they lost the lead briefly. They didn't fracture. They didn't splinter. And, and I look at some of, some of the numbers that reinforce those things. 27 assists on 36 field goals. And they only shot 40%. If they make more shots, I'm sure there's more assists. Minnesota shot 33 34%. I, I was under 35. I know that for sure off the top of my head. Anthony Edwards, 26 points. It took him 27 shots. Yeah, they stifled him after that first quarter where he was super hot. I, 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 no no more. He's six, no, six trips to the free throw line early. Nothing after Props that. to OG. So, like all of those things, I saw a great – Pride in individual defense and not having to overhelp. No indiscriminate switching. Now you're caught in mismatches. Like they stuck to the principles and they got the win. And sometimes you stick to the principles and you don't win, but you say, all right, we're, we're going to let water find its level and keep doing it and it'll eventually pay off. They, got, they were rewarded with a little success early there. And you think about, you know, coming out of preseason, usually – your defense is ahead of your offense. Yes. And the fact that their defense held true says something. Not only did it hold true, it turned to transition points for yes. them. They got out in transition and scored a ton, especially in the third quarter. And then the defense held the fort, held Minnesota to 30% in that third quarter, fourth quarter, and they were still able to find some offensive play. And it's about how they did it. Jonesy's talking about the assists. They moved the basketball. There was OG moments. There was Pascal moments. There was Schroeder moments. Yep, shouts out to Dennis. You just saw different players take their turn at impacting a win for this team. So, to me, you know, how can you win when you don't have your best stuff? Okay. How right. do you manufacture that? And they yep. did that. They did that. Now, a little time to sober up, take it all in, and then, of course, we catch up with the man of the moment, Darko, at practice. There was a really good uh, teaching session for us uh, this morning. Uh, obviously, just uh, playing a first uh, regular season game, uh, we had the jitters, and uh, the, uh, you know, uh, we just wanted to to win that game and get it out of our way. Uh, we found a way, uh, and there was a lot, a lot of. Uh, things for us to to improve on and learn from a lot of things you know it's just first regular season game uh, just uh, feeling the flow uh, guys uh, you know understanding where their shots are gonna come from how how to um, you know play an offensive end uh, everybody's like when regular season kicks in everybody's like reverting to I, I gotta do what I feel comfortable of doing you know and uh, for us we're trying to uh, not break those habits, but we're trying to play a different style of, of uh, basketball uh, with different spacing, with different uh, different uh, you know uh, principles. So it's going to take some time for all of our guys to start feeling comfortable in that, and for me also to figure out how to best use our personnel. Coach, for game one, did this team meet or succeed your expectations? Um, I think we just met expectations. I thought that defensively we did a really good job. I thought that in a transition we did a really good job. And I thought that we, we could do a better job in, in a half court. Anything in particular in the half court? Rotations? Uh, it's uh, in a half court uh, offensively. I, I just thought that we, and there were moments that we did not have force, that we were slowed down. Uh, and then when we were attacking the paint, there, there were opportunities for us to find open teammates that we did not do it on a high percentage. Coach, you said that your rotation is typically with 10, but it could be 9, it could be 11 on some nights. Um, how much is it on a consistent basis performance or versus uh, matchup based? Uh, it's, um, it's both of those things. Plus, for me, it's also thinking big picture. You know, it's it's not necessarily just game by game, but also big picture how we're developing our roster, uh, how we're developing uh, young guys, how we're giving opportunity for all, all, all the players that are on, on our team. So all of those things, they, they, they come in account.